But now um, I'm gonna go to the White Sox here. And the Cubs are at the top, so I mean, not much of a surprise, I guess. But then the Tigers are over here in second place. I guess Chicago, Detroit, because the Hawks and Wings had a rivalry going back when the Wings were still in the Western Conference. Bulls and Pistons, of course, and Bears and Lions, although Bears and Packers is more significant, but Bears and Lions definitely is there because of the NFC North. And there's the Twins, and then there are the Indians. So, AL Central outside the outside of the Royals. And the Yankees, I guess, because they, they're the Yankees. Now we'll take a look at the Detroit Tigers. And yeah, the Indians are at the top, that makes sense. I wonder if the Wings and Jackets will make a rivalry at some point, but here, Tigers and Indians definitely, because Indian fans for the most part hate the Tigers the most. So uh, there's that. And there are the White Sox and the Royals and us for some reason, I guess because we face each other, but they beat us. <laughs> They've beaten us all three times that they face each other that they faced us in the playoffs ever since my existence. But I guess just because they face each other, I mean, <laughs> I guess that sort of adds up. And then the Twins sort of lingering, and the Yankees, because they're the Yankees, also, uh, I think they faced each other in the playoffs, like, and the Yankees have won. I know that they played in 2012 and the Tigers won that. They swept them actually, so now we take a look at the Indians, their top rival. And yes, no question there, the Tigers, and then the White Sox are there too. Reds lingering, Royals also lingering, Twins not as much, but the Yankees because they're the Yankees. And then now we take a look at the Royals. Wow, the Cardinals are at the top. That is very interesting. I guess these two sort of went at it, like, early on, and the Indians, because Indians, 2014, but they won the World Series next year, so, I mean, <laughs> but uh, the Cardinals are at the top, I guess the Battle of Missouri, so, I mean, <laughs> I guess it's forbidden to root for a team that's in your area or in your state, which uh, makes some sort of sense. But you know what? I think I'm gonna go to the NL West. Let's go to the NL West. We have, yes, no question there. The Dodgers are on the most hated team by Giants fans. This is no question. And uh, to be honest, this is like the only team that Giants fans have heavy hate for. They don't root for the Yankees either for the most part. And there are some that don't root for the Red Sox because they've become a very unlikable team ever since they piled on their championships. And uh, there are also some that hate us just because <laughs> a lot of us hate them. Like I said, I don't have as much hate for the Giants, but I don't really root for them. I I've grown to have more issues with the Giants more recently because their fan base, because it's really their fan base. I mean, Giants fans, there were some Giants fans that did stab a Dodger fan for coming to AT&T Park. Like, come on now, that's just, that's just completely ridiculous. But, I mean, we'll talk about that with the Dodgers too, so... Stay tuned for that. <laughs> and the Cardinals, I mean, my dad doesn't like them because he finds them annoying. He's a Giants fan, like I said, pretty much. I'm one of the few A's fans in my family, so <laughs> there's that. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, he doesn't have any issues with us. I'm pretty sure if I wasn't an A's fan, that would probably be different. But, <laughs> but he doesn't have many issues with us. I mean, lingering because of 2001. Uh, NL West, but like I said, their hate for the Dodgers is much greater than any other team. <laughs> I mean, look at this, almost, almost 90%, almost 85%, nearly 90%. I don't think I've seen anything closer than this to 100% for Giants fans. But, uh, click on the Dodgers, because like I said, there, there are some weirdo Ace fans that like to become Dodger fans too just because they hate the Giants and it's just, it's honestly stupid because they just use the fact that they hate the Giants as an excuse to root for a team that's even more unlikable because Giants fan, there was a Giants fan that did stab a Dodger fan and they're completely, like that's just, 
that's just so wrong that's wrong honestly you're a subhuman if you do that sort of thing but dodger fans i mean they stabbed a red Sox fan after game five and another thing that they did was put a giants fan in a coma coma and also dodger fans they would just as quickly praise a player as they would want him out of the lineup after having one bad game so i mean dodger fans they're Honestly, I think they're the worst fan base in baseball. I'm sorry. I, I think they're the worst fan base. I know the good Dodger fans, you know who you are, but as a whole, Dodger fans, I think they're one of the worst. I think they're the worst fan base in baseball. I mean, you can still make cases for the Yankees and the Red Sox, and I mean the Giants too, but for the most part, Dodger fans, uh, and honestly, Angelinos in general, and that's why I don't root for any team, Loser Angeles, especially because. My hate for the Kings and Lakers is much greater than my hate. Well, I mean, it's not even hate, really. It's just I don't root for those teams. But my hate for the Kings and Lakers is much bigger than my dislike towards the Giants and 49ers. So, I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, it's just, I mean, the only team I hate more than those is the Broncos. Because they're my most hated team in sports. So, there's that. But the Cardinals are on here, and like I said, I think they face each other in the playoffs, and Angels, freeway series. I mean, if Angel fans did actually take the survey, then <laughs> I think we would see the A's on their list, and the Dodgers, as well as, like, the Rangers, and, I mean, maybe some other AOS teams. I I'm I'm not sure. I, I just know that the Dodgers and the A's would be on, this, on their list, and probably and the Rangers, too. But uh, take a look at the rest of the NL West because, as I mentioned, the Dodgers are even worse compared to the Giants, and Diamondback fans can attest to that. Not even just because of this survey. I've seen this on Twitter. Diamondback fans will tell you they hate the Giants, but they hate the Dodgers even more. Padre fans are the same way. But like, this right here, I mean, look at this. Dodgers, Giants. I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, it's just, it's just so... So, like, I don't, like, Ace fans are side with the Dodgers, they're just, some of them are weirdos, they just do it because the Giants live right free inside of their head, that's pretty much what the case is, like, I hate the Angels, but, and I like to make fun of them sometimes, but I'm not gonna sit here and become a Dodger fan just because I hate the Angels, and if I, even if I hated the Giants, I'm not gonna become a Dodger fan just because of that, <laughs> like, it's just, it's just so, hmm. It just, I mean, if you do it for family purposes or because you like some players on the team or because you like their personnel or because they're in close proximity to where you live, I can't fault you, fault you for that. I mean, you're just doing what you want. I mean, I can't fault you. Those are, to me, those are valid reasons. It's not like my opinion is worth a damn, but those who do it because they hate the Giants, it's just, I mean, you do it because the Giants live rent free inside your head. That's pretty much why you do it. And, uh, I mean, you're using that as an excuse to root for a team that's even worse. So, I mean, just my two cents on the issue, on the matter. But we'll take a look at the Padres, because they can attest to the Dodgers being even worse than the Giants. And yes, signified right here. Because when they had the All-Star Game in San Diego like a couple of years ago, you could see Giants players were definitely getting booed. They were getting booed, but Dodger players were getting booed even louder. So... <laughs> That's the sort of thing, because I've seen Padre fans are like, I hate the Giants, but I hate the Dodgers even more. So that's just my two cents. Like I said, it's not like my opinion is worth a damn, but whatever. I'm still gonna express it. And now we take a look at the Rockies. This is the one team outside of Dodgers and Giants fans in the NL West that doesn't hate the Dodgers more than the Giants, and for the most part, it seems like Rocky fans hate hate the NL West. I guess, I guess this is because, like, because they're Bronco fans too, and all the, the ones that are, like, half Giants and Raider fans, they're, they do that, I, I don't know, honestly, I'm, I'm probably just spouting some just invalid reason, I mean, if Rocky fans can tell me the reason why they hate the Giants more than the Dodgers, or, you know, why this is the case on this website, then let me know, because that's interesting, but hey, I mean, they're both, they're both unlikable teams. So, <laughs> but then the Diamondbacks on here and the Padres in 2007, yeah, 2007, and then 
and there were the Phillies. Can't say I know the reason why that's the case. Maybe they faced each other in the playoffs one time. But that'll lead us to the NL East, and I know the I know which team. Yep, the Mets. The Mets are on the top. New York Philly rivalry is pre prevalent in almost every sport, I guess, except for basketball. But I think the Knicks and and um, Sixers did have a rivalry like early on in the 70s, don't quote me on that, or like the 80s, don't quote me on that, but I do think that they did have some form of a rivalry, but uh, I mean, definitely Mets and Phillies. I think that the New York Philly rivalry is more prevalent in sports than the New York Boston, because for New York Boston, I mean, it's pretty much just because they play in separate conferences or leagues in the case of baseball, because I mean, there's Yankees, Red Sox, and there's also Patriots and um, Patriots and Jets. There's also, I mean, Knicks fans hate the Celtics more so than Celtics fans hate the Knicks, from what I can see. So, I mean, and they also hate the Celtics more than the Sixers, so, I mean, <laughs> there's the case for that. But, like, I mean, Mets, Phillies, Rangers and Flyers, Giants and Eagles, New York, Philly. <laughs> New York and Philly rivalry is definitely prevalent there, but hey, I mean, I'm not a fan of either team, so it's just what I see from other fan bases, so, or from these the fan bases that are involved with this. But uh, I mean, the Mets at the top of the list for the Phillies, and I mean, like, because I don't I don't think that the Islanders really have a rivalry with. I mean, I don't think that they do. I think like the only team I would see Islander fans hating is the Rangers and I guess some teams that are in the Metro Division but really the Rangers for Islander fans I haven't really left on this website but I mean some of the things I that are taken on this survey doesn't seem to make sense and I'm talking about like other sports mainly because I think baseball it has it like very close but hey I mean these are based on the surveys that were taken I guess so I mean it's whatever but then we have the Nats in second place, not much of a question there as well. And then the Braves. So pretty much every team in the NL East except for the Marlins because the Marlins haven't done anything except for win two World Series and those are their only two playoff appearances. Like, the Marlins have one World Series title in my lifetime and the A's haven't even make it, made it out of the second round or out of the first, out of the divisional round. But, I mean, they did do it once actually, but they didn't win a single game, so. I can go on a long rant about that team. I'm gonna do that in a later video, actually. But, <laughs> but um, the Giants are on here, I guess, because of 2010, and uh, Yankees 2009. I think these they faced the Dodgers in the playoffs at some point. I think they did the same for the Cardinals at some point. So uh, yeah, I mean, not much of a surprise for the three their three most hated teams, and not much of a surprise for the top one. But now that will lead us to the Mets, and uh, 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 the Yankees aren't as high as I thought they would be. They're tied for the Braves in terms of rival points, not very far behind the Nats. So I guess this is very close between these three, but the Phillies are at the top of the list, not much of a surprise. And I mean, yeah, Mets, Yankees, they definitely... I mean, like I said, like A's and Giants, and the Nats are there too, definitely, and the Braves definitely there as well, but pretty much the only four teams that they hate, I guess, the most, the Marlins land there, I guess, you know, lingering because they play in the NL East, and the Cardinals, I think they face each other in the playoffs, I know that the Giants beat them in the wildcard game. And uh, I mean, the Mets ended up beating the Dodgers in 2015, so that's very interesting. But hey, the Dodgers are unlikable. And then we have the Washington Nationals and the Braves. So DC and Atlanta. Although this is the only place where DC and Atlanta is a prevalent rivalry. But yes, the Braves definitely land here. They've gone at each other for the division a couple of times. And also, um, yeah, Phillies, and at least I think they've gone at each other. Actually, I don't think so, now that I think about it. I don't think so. But the Cardinals, the Cardinals did beat them in the playoffs in 2012. Um, Maryland, Mets, because, well, NL East. 
and the Marlins, and actually, I'm actually kind of surprised that the Mets aren't higher because, but I guess that was just one year, so, I mean, <laughs> and then uh, the Marlins lingering, but not very prevalent, so that'll lead us to the Braves, and yes, the Nets, the Mets are there as well, as well as the Phillies, so pretty much... <laughs> Every NL East team outside of the Marlins doesn't really have as much hate for the Marlins because they don't do much of anything. They've only won two World Series titles, like I said. And they haven't really interfered with too much because they are just a completely inept franchise. They are just, oof, God. Oof, God. The Marlins. And yeah, they hate the rest of the NL East. And, um, also the Rays. But yeah, I mean, it's actually... In a way, it's kind of surprising that I see more Marlin fans taking the survey than Angel fans, but at the same time, it's also not very surprising because, I mean, Marlin fans, they just don't want to deal with a bunch of fire sales. Like, I mean, the A's sort of deal, or A's fans are sort of dealing with the same thing, but they're the less extreme of this. They're a less extreme version with the difference being that the A's actually make the playoffs and, um, or, you know, they make the playoffs more frequently. And the fact that, um, that they didn't have as much of a greedy sack of shit as their owner. And they don't really have a greedy sack of shit as their owner, like Jeffrey Loria. But the interesting thing is that the Marlins, like, they had a record MLB low, low attendance this past year, which is, like, the first time this happened since the last season that the Expos were there. We know what those two teams had in common at one point. Oh, so, I mean, Jeffrey Loria is their owner. To be honest, I feel like Rob Manfred made a mistake by getting Jeter on his owner. At first, I was like, mm, that's just, they should be interesting, but... I mean, <laughs> this new Marlins ownership doesn't seem to know what they're doing. I think I think a part of it, actually, and Urinating Tree mentioned this in a video of his, or in a video on the Marlins. He thinks that they um, didn't have the capital to finance a baseball team because of all of, like this lawsuits that Jeffrey Loria got into with the city and like uh, I mean just a bunch of things that have to be paid off and I mean they just have to sell off players because of that because they simply can't afford them like that's just that's an that's an interesting theory that's an interesting theory brought up by him so uh, I mean honestly I, I could believe that I could believe that in all honesty because I mean they cut costs on everything just about everything but uh i think i think they made a mistake i don't know if jorge Mas could have had like more capital to deal with those sort of things but i think that he would have at least done a better job of trying to win the fan or win the fans back over because i mean his fan base they don't they don't really want to deal with this they don't want to deal with it they, they just don't and i don't blame them honestly like <laughs> Derek Jeter and Bruce Herman, like, they don't deserve any sort of viewership for this. But in general, I mean, this just reinforces the stereotype that Florida is in a very good sports market, which, I mean, fair weather fans, but you'll find fair weather fans in a lot of cities like Pittsburgh. I mean, to a certain extent, you could also say, you can also say Oakland to a certain extent, but I mean, it's really that case for the A's, and that's become the sort of theme because they, like I said, I mean, they trade away players but for the most part the people in Oakland I mean if you aren't the Raiders or the Warriors you're gonna have a bit of a tough time selling people on your product unless you are consistent with you know showing that you are actually caring for that product because like now now A's ownership I think is headed in the right direction in terms of like winning the fan base over but Billy Bean needs to not be a delusional cheap ass and they need to not be the delusional misconceivers of baseball that's pretty much what they need to do which like i said i'll get to that in a later video but uh i mean i just wanted to take this time to talk about the marlins a bit i mean eh. just my thoughts on their whole matter i mean i know some are ripping them because they traded away to john carlos stanton and he's supposed to be their face of the franchise and you're supposed to pay your face of the franchise which i mean that makes sense and to a certain extent i agree with that but at the same time, you don't want to pay them too much money. Like, I mean, it could be an A-Rod situation. You pay a bunch of money 
and you don't afford you can't afford giving like you can't afford signing other players because you have them for a while too so i mean that's just a sort of thing so i mean it's just sort of you do have to pay your best players but you have to be careful about it it's my sort of thing my sort of thoughts on the matter but i think that's i mean they don't i think that the theory that tree brought up about Jeter and Sherman not having the capital to finance a baseball team, I think that has some pretty strong reinforcement. I think there's pretty strong reinforcement behind that theory. So, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what happens moving forward. But this team is such a tumor.